All right. All right, guys, we want to welcome you all to Relational Real Talk uh, tonight, uh, Thursday. Uh, I'm going to step back in a few minutes. I just want to make sure we've gotten started. Hoping everybody, everybody's had a wonderful <laughs> Thursday and ready for some great conversation. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Joe and Mrs. Faith and get this background. I got a noisy background behind me. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to the two of them. And uh, y'all have a wonderful night on tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. <laughs> well, welcome, everyone. Uh, sorry about the delay tonight. <laughs> Normally, um, we're here at um, 7 o'clock where we had a little delay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, if you all have met one another and you have each other's, um, you know, phone numbers, if you can text them and tell them to come on, we in the room, we in the living room. <laughs> I hope we didn't mess up everybody's schedule tonight. So we'll wait a few seconds um, or a minute or so before we actually get started um, in the conversation. So hello, Mr. Joe. Hello, hello, sister. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Just uh, feeling like I'm trying to catch up with myself, but I think we're going to be all right. Oh, we're going to be good. We're yeah. going to be good. Yeah, like so, <clears throat> yeah we're going to be so, great. <laughs> I'm trying to, it was busy, but again, busy and productive. So I'm glad about that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm excited right. about sharing some things tonight and yeah, put, put some love in the room and love um, in the room. <laughs> love the room. It stays in the room. I don't care what we do. <laughs> it stays in the room. In the room. Yes. Yes. yes and yes, it yes. hey, and then it goes out. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, right. you come in the room and then you take it out the room. That's <laughs> right. That's what it's all about. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you don't contain that. So. Mm -hmm. so let's just check in with everybody and see how everyone's doing. Hey, Katambra, how are you? I don't know if she can hear me, Katambra. I just wanted to check in. Hello, Miss Evelyn. How are you tonight? I just want to make it. I'm just trying to wake up everybody to, <laughs> and, yeah. and say we're here. We're on now. If they have to have their mics on mute and maybe they wanted to come back. Yeah. Um, Peggy, how are you tonight? Peggy. Good everyone. evening. Okay, good. Evening. good. <laughs> we're glad you're here, yes. Peggy. Peggy. Yes, 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 uh -huh. yes. Great. Thank you for joining us. How are you, Tamara? I am doing well. Just got off work and now I'm online. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. You had a good day? Oh, it was a, it, all is well. No, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> all is well. You don't okay. have anything else That's to right. say. All is well. All is well. Okay. <laughs> all is well. Well, we're glad you're here tonight. We're happy you're here tonight. And Miss Shirley, how are you? <laughs> all is well. I'm fine. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Your hair is pretty. Good to see Joe. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so pretty. Thank you. It changes from month to month. Miss <laughs> <That's good. laughs> It changes from month to month. So I hope y'all can't see me though, can you? Oh, we <laughs> want to see you. Come on. Uh, no. uh -uh. I just want to make sure I'm trying to understand. <laughs> No, we can't, we can't see you. We can't see. I'm just playing with you. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just playing with you. Come on. You can come on in. <laughs> okay, Miss Nita is in the house. How you doing, Nita? I'm doing I'm on my way home from work, so I'm checking in. All right, now. Come on. All mm -hmm. right. Sorry, I'm working. Well, Katambra yeah. just said that she's okay. working, but she's there. Thank right. you for being here, Katamra. Chime in when you can. We understand. And right. I see Nikki is on the line. Hey, Nikki. They working you to death. Your poor bones to death, aren't they? 
I don't hey everybody know. good evening hey. yes I, I am gonna chime in when i can i have been really working it seemed like every thursday but <laughs> i am i am going to be on on the call i have my airpods in so i am going to chime in i hope that everybody's having a a wonderful night tonight mm-hmm. yes <laughs> just, to, just to hear your voice nikki likewise mr j likewise mm-hmm. yep yeah, it's good to hear nikki's boy oh yeah yeah, you miss folks. <clears throat> you miss every, you know, when they're out for a little working or whatever. Yeah, you know, you miss them, right? Absolutely. So, good evening. Oh, hey, Evelyn. Good evening. Good evening, my sister. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? Oh, I'm great. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> We're just doing our check in. That's all. All right. I know we're a little late, so I do apologize to everybody. Who, it's okay because um, I was too. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel a little better now. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, I'm putting the disclosure out here. If you see me um putting some food in my mouth, I have a reason. Okay. <laughs> I all haven't good. eaten all day. So uh, I might sneak a little chi- a little piece of food. So please, please, I apologize. I know it might not be <laughs> etiquette. But um, okay. for, the, for the room, but I'm on camera, so I, I might come off my camera. Then I don't, I don't want to make anybody hungry. I got to do <laughs> this, <laughs> so I don't want to make. I know tomorrow's Fish Friday, right? So I had it on Thursday. <laughs> I had to pick me up something to eat. Well, Joe, why don't you kick us off? Why oh, all right. Well, I put a piece of fish in my mouth. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> With it for a little bit. Again, I think um, first of all, it was a great place to be. I think last Thursday um, we heard from a few of the people on the line, including ourselves. We're still talking about teach me how to love. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think one of the comments, off a few comments, came with the notion that. Um, we are we are transforming. Uh, mm-hmm. The message that I heard what Cheryl was saying was that everybody that was on the line was talking about growing, transforming, becoming a better person through the struggles we all go through, and and all moving all that in the course of love. And you know, it's very it's so true. If all we do here is not engineered or the engine for doing anything we do here is not love, then what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Um, We're just not meeting to meet. We're meeting to um, encourage each other, love on each other, and create an atmosphere of love that propels the kingdom forward. We We hopefully come here and leave better than we can. And that's that's the whole essence of that. So for tonight, um, and listen, um, Faith, you had something from last week that you wanted to share. Um, yeah, it, it was one thing, uh, the question that we um, posed for those of you who weren't here last Thursday, the, we had two questions. What um, What is your definition of love? And then how do you show it? Those were the two questions that we asked last week. But you know how we ask questions and it evolves totally into something else. And that's what it's supposed to be. Right. When you throw out questions, you're just throwing it out there to get, you know, conversation going and what your opinion is or what your feelings are. And then it evolves. And so we're doing exactly what we were supposed to do. And so I just wanted to throw that out there. And so this week, we're going to talk about the different types of love, because, you know, our series that we're on is teach me how to love. And so teaching is, excuse me, anytime that you're taught something, you're getting it from someone, it's an exchange, right? Mm -hmm. Even if you're self-taught, that book that you're reading from is going to teach you something or someone else is going to 
teach you something. So we do self-taught or we learn as far as more of a structured environment. So to, for us to love properly, I think it's good. We talked about, I think the first Thursday, we talked about what love was in, in relation to God, you know, and, the, and we, we pulled out some scriptures. We also talked about what love isn't. So we that was our first week. And then we involved, uh, we evolved into the two questions that we had last week. So this is our third week on Teach Me How to Love. I don't know how long we're going to be on this because guess what? Next Thursday is March. <laughs> we, next week is March. It's going to be, I think, March the 3rd. I think it's next right. week. Next, no, I'm sorry, March the 2nd. And so we are getting ready to go into a new month um, starting next week. And, you know, it's the third month of the year. And so time is rolling and we just want to get this thing right. <laughs> you know, try to get it right at the first of the year. So if love finds you and however it wants to find you, you can define what type of love it is. That's right. Is it agape? Is it eros? We're going to talk about all <laughs> those different types of love and how to define them and i found out there's even a love for self-love yes it's a type right. of love and i said oh i said you hear self-love that's the new buzzword self-love self-love so now we have a definition we know what self-love is but now we have a love a name for it in terms of i guess it's a, it's um greek a Greek name for, you know, self-love. I said, okay. <laughs> so we <laughs> have all our different definitions, categories, and all that. Because we know we have different friendship love. We have all these different types of love. So we're going to talk about that tonight. So before we get started, Mr. Joe, I guess I can open up in prayer. Yeah, absolutely. Get started. Okay. And before we get started, welcome to everybody in right now thank you for joining us and tonight we're talking about the different types of love we're gonna break those down father we just thank you right now god we thank you for this day god we thank you for the breath that you have given us to breathe god we thank you god that we're all joining in the living room tonight here in relational real talk and we're gonna talk real tonight about love we thank you god that our love is not only here in the room god but when we leave, we can pour that love out to those that we touch, that we talk to, that we share. And we thank you, God, for all that are in the rooms. God, talk, touch their bodies. And if they're not feeling well, we speak health, we speak healing, God. Those who are going through some type of loss, God, we, we just speak to them and their families, God, that you are strengthening them, Father. We thank you, God, for those who are just here, just to hear what you have to say and be able to glean and share tonight. So we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you all glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen, sister. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm throwing it back to you, Mr. Jack. <laughs> oh, well, over. <laughs> I think I'll catch the hook and let's see, can we hook into, um, you know, I got the format and it's called the seven forms of love. And actually it was sent to me some time ago. So uh, we just pulling it back out and going over the seven different types. And this, when he sent to me, this is what he said. Okay. When I, when, <clears throat> when I was little, little, yeah, little, and this was um, uh, around Valentine's Day uh, in that season. When I was little, everyone in my class would give each other Valentine's along with candy hearts and other treats. Some Valentine's were store-bought, others handmade. Either way, we would store them in the special mailbox. Mailboxes were created out of the cardboard and construction paper 
blue and glitter. We will go around the classroom and swap Valentine, maybe giving a few extra to the kids we like the most. And that leads right into the first, well, first of all, let me back up a little bit. I think you said it first and foremost, Faith, is that once we seek God, we will find God. I think that is the ultimate love that one must get first in order to spin off into these seven forms of love. Um, and that ain't necessarily order, but since we're trying to be orderly and God is a God of order, I think for each and every person, again, and I don't wanna sound repetitious, but to love, we got to know God is love, love and love is God. So that's the ultimate beginning of allowing God to come in our heart, to remove the fears and allow him to do what he do in our hearts. Anyway, with that said, this is, I realize how, this is an example of filio. Am I saying that right? Which are affectionate love. is a love that exists between friends, close colleagues, and peers. It has nothing to do with romantic attraction but occurs when pe two people share similar values and respect for each other. That says a mouthful in itself, respect for each other. And that's the, and it's, and it's called affectionate love. Filio is affectionate love. And again, a love that exists between friends, uh, close colleagues and peers. Um, what's your thoughts on that, Faith? Hello? Did something happen? Faith, are you there? Oh, okay. I think my... My uh, mic went mute. I was trying to um, close someone's mic. Okay. But I can't do it. Okay. Um, Ms. Welton, if, can you put your mic on mute, please? I don't know if he can hear me, but I don't think he's making too much noise. Okay, so, yes. Um, the philia, yeah, that is affectionate love. And it's really categorized I had some uh, a graphic that I sent um, to you as well, and they had um, it categorized under friendship. Okay. And um, it is is an affectionate love, and um, it converses in deep conversation. That's what they have as far as philia is concerned. But I think you hit a really good key uh, key point when you. Um, gave that definition and for me the word that really comes out is respect yes you know we have to respect you know we have to respect each other you know and and sometimes you know some people don't know what that is what respect is especially if you're in a friendship um or if you're in a conversation you have to respect, you know, each other's feelings, each other's thoughts, respect each other's space. That's you right. Know? So, yeah. So that affectionate, it's an affectionate love, but it's not affectionate to categorize it in romantic love. It's just affectionate. And it says also share similar values. And again, to respect for each other. And it's, goes back to the thought you want respect you have to give respect and that you know that should be part of our going forward our growing and and understanding of each other um and anybody else have any comments when it comes to uh affectionate love anybody on the line have any thoughts
what well, while somebody comes on i just want to say something that just hit me too it says when two people have share similar values right right okay. so i'm i'm gonna see if i can make it real plain okay so let's say me and you me and you love god that's similar right right but you might like to ride a bike right right and I might not want to ride a bike. I might want to, I might want to walk. Right. So even though we have similar values that we value God highly, we both are individuals. That's right. And we both have, you know, different thoughts or whatever that flavor is. Because we have a menu in life that we can choose <laughs> without options, right? So just because we have similar um, values, we're not the same. Right. So we have an identity. We have our own identity. And we can still have that filial love and still be who we are. I just Absolutely. want to, I want to make, that, make that comment here. Anyone yeah. else? It sounds like it sounds like um, filial love is the love that you have among friends, like mm -hmm. we are friends on the line, like uh, like it's the love that you have, like in your Sunday school class, <laughs> or, my, <laughs> or my craft buddies, or you know, yes. it's just a general love that we have is in the affection in that you do have a warmth and affection for people that you are around and that you care about. And so that's just the general type of love that we normally have when we like somebody else and we want to be around them. And usually we around people that have similar values that we do it. At least we enjoy them. We may, may not be always be around them because um, we may work with them, but if you work with someone and you love them as a friend or as an associate, then that's the filial love that you have. Is that right, yeah. Joe? Yeah, that was perfect. I mean, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Okay. And that element exists. I think the beauty of it all is you're allowed to be the person you are. We're not a carbon copy of no one else. But the yeah. one thing that can happen to all of us is we can have a heart for God when we allow God to do what God do, does in all of our hearts again yes. and, and move. I, I was saying, when you turn your heart to God, God will turn his heart to you. And then you have common ground, you have commonality, you have common components. So when we come into a setting, you know, the person or the entity in the center is love. Yes. And and that's that's the whole idea. And all we're doing tonight roughly is going through the different forms. Um, and you may uh, uh, reset the room, uh, faith to let everybody know what we're kind of doing, even though, we, I mean, where we are now. Um, okay. And and then we'll move on to the next. Um, now, does uh, does the uh, filios love is that the same uh, as uh, from uh, that the uh, the word Philadelphia uh, city of brotherly love? Uh, oh, the filio isn't that the that's philia? I think, yeah, that is. Uh huh. Yeah, it is, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And yes. so they kind of. Uh, puts it in perspective in some ways there. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's, it's called what, the city of brotherly love or city, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And I think that does. Welcome again, welcome. Hey there, Joe, how you doing? I'm good, I'm Man, good. I'm one, good. one day I'll be able to dress like you on Zoom, okay? <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to get there, okay? But one day I will be able to. 
<laughs> you on you you on it, Welton. I see you. Okay. So it's all good. It, it really all right, is. it's good. To, it's good yeah, he had to, he had to, to put guys. a picture up so he can yeah. put it down, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to get kind of close. So yeah. we'd like to welcome everyone who has come into the room since we started a few minutes ago. We're glad to see you. We just want to let you know what we're um talking about tonight. Um the first week we started teaching, teach me how to love. We talked about the God love. What is God's love? And we also talked about what is not God's love. And then we, last week, if you weren't here, we had two questions on the table. One was, what is your definition of love and how do, and how do you show it? So we talked about that. And so this week we're evolving ourselves to talk about the seven different types of love. So that's what we're talking about tonight and whatever conversation spins off from there. So the first one that we were just talking about was philia and, and that is our affectionate love that you can give to family, friends, your respect, each other you have a common or you have shared similar values and so that's the first one okay mr joe okay you and, that, and we'll move on to the second um the, for example the type of love most of us feel is storage or familiar love this is the kind of love that flows between parents and offsprings between brother and sister it's natural, it's deep, it's imbued, um, and that word, I looked it up, it means to inspire or permeate with a feeling of quality. That's, it's, uh, let me, the word is I-M-B-U-E-D. In every, is our very blood. It's our very blood, blood brother, blood sister. It's a kind of love every child has the right to experience because it lets us know that we are not alone, but valued, appreciated, and wanted. Do you hear me? Do you see me? And do I matter? Right. Yes. Those That comes kind of into that. Go ahead, Faith. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sheena, how you doing? Did you have your mic open? Oh, I didn't mean to open it, but hey, how are you doing? I'm good. good. I'm, it's good to see you tonight. It's good to see you too. <laughs> um, just feel free to chime in if you want to later or whenever. Um, what hit me is that example right there. And I don't know why it took me in this direction, but um, it said it's the kind of love every child mm -hmm. has a right, has a right to experience. That, that hit my heart right there because, you know, when you have a right to, that means you should have open, you know, it's something that is something that you should have. You have the right to, like we have the right to vote. Right, but do we exercise that? Yeah, some yeah. hopefully all of us do, but if we don't, but you still have a right. That's right. And so when a child has a right to experience that, you know, I think about sometimes, I think about children who are in foster care. You know, I think about children who are orphans, you know, and are waiting for adoption. And there's so many kids that are in facilities because they have nowhere to go. And I just pray that those who are watching over them or work in those facilities are giving them a right to experience everything that Joe just said. You know, because it's sad. It's sad because I, I saw this um, um, news. It was uh, um, on the news here in Dallas maybe a year or so ago. And I thought it was such a beautiful nonprofit organization. And I didn't write it down because I was so captivated what they do. 
Well, this organization, what they do, if they have siblings that are in that same um, system as far as being waiting to be adopted or foster home, if they have an older sibling that is getting ready to leave, because I think at 18, they can leave and go on their own way. Well, this nonprofit organization gets them a place to stay, a home. And they decorate the home for the younger ones to come and the older one would take over if they were responsible enough to help raise the other children, you know, and I just thought it was so beautiful because they, they don't have a home. They've never had a home before to call home. And and that's what that non non nonprofit organization does. And they decorate it, give them furniture, just like they just starting fresh, right? And their clothing and everything, they provide that. So when we have a right, I think that um, when we have a right, we should exercise it and we should give to those who do have a right. That's right. Like like our children. And what are those three areas that you said, Joe? To fit? You said to um we are not alone, but value, appreciate, and want. Value, appreciate it, and want it. And want it. And want it. And I think that's what we want to feel. We want to feel valued. Everybody has value. I don't care what anybody says, all of us have value to give, value to share. Value is inside of us. God created us, created us. So he put value in us. Yes. When we were birthed out of our mother's womb, <laughs> we already had value inside of us, right? So we have value. We want to be appreciated. We want to be touched. You know, we want to make sure that, you know, I feel something, you know? <laughs> so, you know, it's important that we take time and we make those feel unvalued value as well as ourselves feeling you know to to be valued I think that's one thing that we can give to those and doesn't cost anything to anybody right right does anybody else have anything to share on that I will I reiterate those again this is the kind of love that flows between parents and offspring, between brother and sister. Mm -hmm. It's natural, it's deep. It's the kind of love every child has the right to experience because it lets us know that we're not alone. Um, And I'll take that a step further, Um, Faith. It doesn't have to be a biological child. Mm-mm. children that's want, for the most part, and, and I know this is more than about children, but it is about familiar love. But mm-hmm. I think once a kid grasps that, whether mm-hmm. it's come from a, an adult, I mean, they can learn what love looks like, feels like. They feel protected. Mm-hmm. You can pour into them you can bring them to a level of confidence that they probably never have. You being grounded, you can ground them because I've said it a number of times before. Some of them may pretend like they have tough shells because they're trying to survive. the survival mode. Mm -hmm. So you can't get close to the children um, do anything other than love, not aggression, because they're already are aware of that, depending on where they're being. But right. what I'm saying um, is that when you show them something different, mm-hmm. and that's what it's all about, it's got to be something they never felt, but they can feel it when they're under that. When they're under the person that knows how to love, then they'll be able to feel love and to realize what they thought may was love. Um, Even in some situation, kids come up thinking love was this. Love was male 
uh, being taken advantage of or right. and told them this is the love that this is the way it's done by a person that really trying to manipulate them and tell them this is what love is about is and it's not so you know uh, for them to know something different again and I don't want to sound repetition they have to see it they have to feel it and to know what they thought was no 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 that's not it somebody um, was showing you something that's not the truth right. and that's when we show up with the love of God um, you know you know so I saw um and some of you probably seen the same commercial or something similar I, um the other night I saw two little children maybe about four something like that one was black and one was white right and they ran together and they just hugged one another and that's just a pure, you know, a pure love right there. Yes. That's, that's that childlike love that doesn't know color. They just yeah. know that you you a child just like you look just like me. You just different, you know. And and children, if they're you know, they're normally taught division or taught all these other um distrim discriminatory things but really children will show us a lot if we observe them you oh, know absolutely and how they relate to what you know that's relationship right there in itself as you i know, was listening but, as so i was listening to you guys and uh talk about the definition of that type of familiar love what came to my mind is like uh i think joe said that I think he said, or what what I said was, that's the love that we're entitled to just by living. When, right. uh, when we are, are birthed into this world, uh, it's a way that God shows us when he uses our family as an example of how we should love him and how he loves us. Because it's like a natural love that you give to your your child. And, 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 and it's the same type of natural love that you experience with your siblings and that's just like the basic love so as you grow older you have an idea of what real love feels like because you are learning um as you're growing uh what how love is manifested because you have seen it among your family members and so that's what came to my heart when I was listening to you guys discuss it. And being repetitive, in my view, God gives us a family, uh, gives us that natural love because he has that natural love for us. We are his creation. We are his mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. And so by us, when I mean us, like you, Joe, all of us that are a saints believers together, that's the kind of love that we naturally feel for each other. That's really kind of an extension from that filio because we know how uh, familial love, you know how you feel when you love your, your family, your sister, regardless of how we interrelate during those good experiences growing up, you know how it feels when it's all good. And so, yes, that may become fractured as we get older because of life experiences and other um, uh, experiences that come into our lives. But basically, we're learning what a natural love should feel like as we grow older. Um, and that surely, uh, you know, it, it was times when it was growing up, it was like, um, getting together, coming home, homecoming. Yeah, that that was that was siblings, family getting together, coming home. Yes, yes. home was a place. That's yeah. exactly. It was a place where everybody could come yes. and love on each other, even though you may have some a little friction here and there. But for the most part, it was coming back to a place mm -hmm. where you okay. had experienced love. That's right. Um, and that was beautiful in itself. Mm -hmm. You're going home. I'm going yeah. home to be with those that I care about. That's yeah. True. Yeah. The dorm is closed. I'm going home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
But you know, yeah. I have um a memory that I'd like to share and and not to jump off of anything else that we were going towards, but storage mm-hmm. that I found out is a familiar love, but it reflects on a fun memory with a friend. So you all are friends of mine, so I'm going to reflect with this memory. <laughs> you have a fun moment. But the love coming home, when you said homecoming or coming home, I'll never forget when I was a little girl, we lived in California, my parents, and uh, my mom was from Tyler. And so every Christmas, every Christmas, we would come to Tyler, you know, for the holidays. And then if we drove, we would go through L.A., pick up my Aunt Marva. We'll go out and drive all the way to Tyler. As a little girl, they would bring all their ball, all their gowns with them, you know, to Tyler. And I don't know if you all have ever experienced this, um, you know, who live in Tyler. But back in the day, like maybe hmm, the 60s, like 65, 60. 60 through its 70s or something like that tyler used to be a a social place like christmas they had christmas balls and everybody would come from different areas and and tyler was like a a a melting pot everybody was in there you know emmett scott and uh, everybody just come back and they would dress up and as a little girl, I was like, wow, you know, they have all the, the sequins and all this stuff. And I'm like, one day I'll be able to do something like that. How seasons change. Now it's it's a whole different flow. It's not like that anymore. And I mean, they have them lined up. I would, you know, I see them in the morning. Hey, how was your, how was your night at the ball? And they would explain to me what all happened. But it was just a happy moment to be able to spend time. I see my parents seeing people they haven't seen in a long time. They would come by, you know, just fellowship and have that type of friendship, you know, that bonding where you always come back home. It was just certain times of the year where you come back to where you were raised and you just pick up and and you reflect and you go back to your world, you know, where you came from. But, you know, Tyler was that place for me. Mm -hmm. And 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 I have memories of that too. And you're exactly right. Uh, people that were working uh, took their vacations at Christmas because they know they knew that uh, the friends and their acquaintances and people they grew up with were going to be coming home. And so uh, that's like a philo love, but it's still some of those friends, you, especially as you were speaking earlier, that were adopted or grew up in foster environments. Uh, it became familiar because uh, th- that's all they had. That's all they knew. And um, what part of California did you grow up? In Oakland. Oh, okay. I lived in Los Angeles for 18 years, but it was West LA. That's okay. interesting. Uh-huh. Well, Mr. Welton is from, is from LA. He's from Crenshaw area. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I know Crenshaw area. West Angeles Church of God and Christ is in the Crenshaw area. And that's where I was a member when I was living out there. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Charles you Blake. You got a home girl. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. I see that. West Angeles, huh? Yeah. That's right. Was... Bishop Blake. Yeah, when he was doing his thing, of course, he's older. His older son is taking over now, of course, you know. But okay. I was out there doing his prime. Okay. Oh, yeah. Big, big uh-huh. cathedral. When Daryl Coley and all of them were coming up before they became famous, I was singing in the choir with Daryl Coley. Oh, mm. Mm-hmm. oh yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I, it's interesting to me so far, both of these loves, how they, they, um, I don't know this diagram, but I think, I think one of you shared this diagram where you take circles and part of the circles, uh, uh, imposes on the other and it becomes another part of of I don't know the name of that diagram right now but I think that's where they intersect yeah. the, the the familiar love and the philo exactly 
mm-hmm. and the Philo love. Uh, I think all of, and I'm just assuming getting ahead of Joe because I don't, I didn't get to review it. I mean, these loves. So I don't know anything except what you guys are telling me. But it's, <laughs> as I'm listening, you're doing real good, Shirley. You're doing really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm on receive, but I'm just bringing it back to you to make sure I understand it. Oh, and so, yeah. as yeah, so that it looks like these loves interrelate, they interchange, they go back mm-hmm. and forth. It just depends on your experience. And so I'm just really liking the session. Thank oh. you so much. Mm-hmm. Thank oh, you. you hey, you all are making it happen. It's not That's us. Right. That's <laughs> right. It is not us. Does anybody else have any? any reflection on that type of love or memories of family or friends or you know as a child or anything to share that they would like to share anybody anybody Wow. No, no one has any fun memories. Okay. No <laughs> fun memories. Oh my goodness, y'all. <laughs> well, I tell you, I know um, if my brother could be on this line tonight, he probably won't have any fun memories about, <laughs> about his big sister because I was more of a disciplinarian. And it's funny how when they're when you're small, you have, you know, these feelings about maybe you're older brother and sister but as you get older and you and you grow into adulthood your whole relationship changes yeah, you, oh, yeah. you change you're like yeah i know i needed that but with me. <laughs> you know <laughs> or you are you understand with some of the things that you felt that was coming down on you like a ton of ton of bricks like why they treat me this way <laughs> well, you have a, a realization and then that friendship starts to form you know That's- that storage that storage starts to form that type of love so okay Mr. Juggins yeah. and I think you you know in what you were saying is so true you get to understanding why the discipline was necessary to bring you to the person that you are today um as and the next one was as we grow taking our steps into a larger world mm-hmm. we then discover affection and love which we've already talked about. Now comes lotus, a lotus. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but lotus is playful love based on flirting, huh? lighthearted teasing. The type of love is still childlike and innocent, but it is our first experience of, with intimacy. This is the type of love that makes our teenage year feel so exciting. Spell that, Joe. Do what now? Can you spell the name of that love for me? Oh, yes. It's uh, L-U-D-U-S. Okay. Commonly called playful love. Mm -hmm. But it has flirtations grounding with it, lighthearted teasing. Mm. So, yeah, lighthearted. Uh, yeah, the type what's, of what's, what's lighthearted teasing? I don't know what that is, look like. Um, could be kind of made a, a flirty move of a shoulder, or you know, it's a flirtatious oh, type. Okay. I guess that, I mean, I'm not an expert on it, but that may be the situation. I'm glad you're not an expert. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, it could be that. Very lighthearted and, and uh, you know, it's still a love that is childlike and innocent. So it has a certain innocence about it. But I think it's getting more into um, your feelings and having feelings for uh, I guess it's kind of getting into the teenage years that we come. Oh, I have an experience. I oh, remember. Yeah. Um, I remember. Uh, I went to Old Emma Scott. Uh, okay. I guess I graduated from Emma Scott High School, but I went to Old Emma Scott, and we used to have socials at the school. And I remember one mm-hmm. of the guys in my class 
uh, asked me to dance. We didn't know how to dance, but asked me to dance on a slow record. And I remember him putting his head on my shoulder. And I remember that embarrassing me so much that I left the party and, and started off running home. And I made it all the way to the cut. If you've heard of the cut. I know what the cut is. Uh-huh. And right there, it was, uh, everything was booming then, house man. And then there was a, a drugstore, right? Oh, was was right Moon so. there then? Uh-huh, Mr. Moon. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Mr. Moon was over there on another street, but yeah, drugstore there. So this guy yeah. went into the drugstore and bought probably, a, I don't know, it was silver, but it wasn't sterling, I'm sure, of hearts. And the hearts was broken. It was a chain. And he caught up to me and he apologized for uh, putting his head on my shoulder. And, um, and when, when you were describing the first kind of affectionate or emotional love, I guess he was flirting with me and trying to tell me that he likes me and right. he wants me to be his girlfriend. I didn't understand it then. I was kind of slow about catching on if a person likes me or not and um so but that was looking back on it now it's, it's interesting that you made me think all the way back <laughs> <laughs> but we, we made friends we stayed friends and he became one of my best male friends throughout the years and he's still living he's got some okay. dementia now that's a but, blessing Shirley Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. So Anybody? I think that's an example of an emotional love. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is. Anybody? Um, Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say that for people who don't know me, I, I'm kind of, a, even though I'm an introvert, I, I'm outgoing. I've learned how to be outgoing. And, and so I'm the type that will, you know, never treat anybody like a stranger so i always have something i always come up with something clever to say to somebody uh you know whether it be in the store or whatever it might be or or whatever the case might be you know and and so uh, I, I look at this kind of love sort of like which not saying that i would be flirting with them but i think I'm very playful. I can be very, I can be very serious, but I can also be very playful. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, and I, I, I know that so, sometimes people who, who are not used to me, uh, and if they are kind of an inward type of person, uh, just like my sister, sister was just saying, you know, they may think that I'm flirting with them you know, uh, or something like that. And, you know, at, at some time I had to uh, apologize for some, to somebody because they, you know, because, you know, they, they thought that I was and that's not what I was doing. But anyway, I just giving that example. When, when I say here, playful and kind of, and really lighthearted. Yeah. And I mean, that kind of, that kind of describes my, my, uh, my personality. Um, I know like you, it. my brother. I know you. I know you. Mm -hmm. Those kind of guys used to really confuse me because mm -hmm. sometimes you're, you're playful, <laughs> you're playful, and but you're really serious, but you're playful because you just don't really know what to say or how to say it, and mm -hmm. you, you laugh about it, but if that person catches what you say and give you a chance, it becomes easier and then you can show your serious side. But you right. were the most con confusing <laughs> type of person. <laughs> oh. But well, I, I, I think I need to lay down I think I need to lay down on my sofa so I can tell you so we, you can analyze me here. You know, we can tell <laughs> uh, yeah yeah and, and I that know. has been I you know and you know what it it, it did get me <laughs> it, did, it, did, it did get me in in trouble in high school sometimes. I know uh, it did. 
I know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But I think th it was a protection for me as well because I, know I would, it. <laughs> because I would, I would, uh, I, and I still do it. Uh, I will. Yeah, you didn't want to be hurt. Yeah, I initiate something with them before they say something that I would not be able to respond to. So I'm exactly. Oh, and, and through <laughs> through and it's actually through you know working in this. Uh, uh, in professional life as an engineer and things like that, it's helped me, you know, working at yeah. Honeywell and other places. It, it's helped me because, because um, especially being African-American, you know, I, I think some of that had to do with it too, because yes. you don't want, you don't want to scare that person. You don't want to uh, uh, appear to be uh, that person that, that's going, you know, going to, and, and, and hide, uh, carjack them or whatever the case might be, you know? So uh, I would, had a tendency to to be that way. Funny story. I'm trying to think if I should say this. Um, high school. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Think about yeah, it. Think about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think I can say it tastefully. Uh, but but we'll give you a very very good good example. Uh, you know, for some reason, I think I I was not. I, I was late for PE or something like that. So I didn't. I didn't dress I, I didn't uh you know what suit up or whatever for PE and there was a, a a friend of mine who I talked to I used to talk to all the time I said Cheryl how come you're not how come you're not uh dress up for PE and she said oh uh, I, I just, I'm not feeling well I said well you were feeling well earlier today well why aren't you feeling well you know and you guys can imagine what she said she said well then if you must know I'm on my monthly, I mean, I, I say, <laughs> you know, so I end up putting my foot in my mouth, you know what I mean? But it, it was playful. It, it was well-meaning, but you know, so that's, that's kind of how I think of this type of love, not, you know, and it says, you know, I, I think I posted something there saying that it's the, uh, it's, it's the beginning beginnings, you know, to, uh, what did I say here? Um, it, it, to, to, to romance. To get the, it's what's it now? To romantic love. Right. Yeah, right, right. But you know what? I understand. What's your name, Wendell? What is your name? Welton. Wendell? Welton. Elton John. Oh. Elton John with the W's. Okay, <laughs> Welton. So I I get you when you were saying when you were working in your professional life, and you used mm -hmm. that little joking thing because see, the bottom line is you couldn't show yourself to be smarter than those white folk you were around, and so you use that as a tool. And you probably mm -hmm. mastered that because that tool worked for you and it, and you use it anytime you want to pull it out in any circumstance. It doesn't matter whether it's a romantic, whether it's professional or whatever, you use that tool because it has all, it's worked for you most of the time. So I can even understand you using that in the work environment instead of just mm -hmm. speaking strongly exactly what this is that you're trying to say on your work environment. You just throw something out and kind of tickle, tickle, but you know, this is just to soften the blow because you know you were right and they didn't know what they were saying, or maybe they didn't have anything as strong to offer as you did. Right. And and uh I'll give you I don't take it over, but I have I just I just thought of another example. Um, you know, I I've been uh directing choirs, worship teams, and things like that for many, many years. And uh, when I was younger, you know, you don't always have the tact uh, as a leader uh, to say certain things and uh, or, or the right way to say it. And, uh, you, uh, and it, it, uh, someone brought it to who was wiser than another, another, my, well, actually my music mentor. Uh, he mentioned that uh, that when you are directing you're not asking people to do anything. You're telling them, okay, I need more soprano. I need more, I need more tenors. I need more altos. Oh, quiet, quiet. You know, you, everything you're doing is sort of a, a, uh, a command. And, exactly. and some, some people who are not used to people telling them what to do, uh, uh, don't understand that. And I had to take some responsibility in my younger days because uh, someone brought it to my attention is that I didn't know how to turn that off, the commanding. Mm. And so what happened was that 
over the years, as I got wiser, you know, even though we have an intense play time when we're learning some music, mm-hmm. I always uh, either say something, uh, a joke or something, or even something about myself or or something like that, you know, just to take the, the tense tenseness off the situation. Yeah. So uh, and so, I've I've learned over years how to get more out of the people by showing that side yeah. of me. And right. uh, some people say, "Oh, Mr. One, you 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 change. You're not the same person you used <laughs> to be." You know, and that's because I had to learn how to how yeah. to balance that out. That's right. That makes sense. Yeah. It's always important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I think a lot of I think a lot of that Wilton is uh, understanding human behavior, and it comes mm-hmm. primarily from desire, emotion, and knowledge, and understanding that, and even in situations where you trying to get something done sometimes you have to break away and maybe have Mm -hmm. a laugh or two and then come back when you come back you come back stronger it's relaxed um and and people are relaxed and then they'll do you'll get more out of them that's Uh, right yeah you will you have to know when to back off uh Mm -hmm. and then go back to it and then Then from that point you get things accomplished (laughs) But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. And when okay. you are a natural leader, like it seems that you guys are on this line, it is something that you have to learn how to come back because you'll always be out front and take charge. And it's not so much as you are demanding, like as a choir director, yes, you are. I've never heard of it uh, in that spoken in that way, but you're exactly right. But um, you uh, will always be in a situation where you will have that role, whether you speak it or not, you will become quieter about it and learn to like not say anything when you have uh, an idea, but it's always going to be there. I think it's a gift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. Um, I know that um, at my workplace and some of you all might have taken this um, test well, it's not really a test, it's an assessment, and it's called Strength Finders. And uh, this, this assessment will give you your top five strengths that you, you as a person that you use. And so my one of my stronger strengths is called Woo, W-O-O. And what that Woo means is that I have the skill and the strength to win others over. Mm -hmm. And so that skill, it's like, it's it's almost like the Lord blessed me with that, where I can navigate through people that might be tough. Ooh, but I went somehow, I I just tempered them down and I kind of smooth them over. And the next thing they know, they're laughing. You know, I win them over, you know, or if I have a point that I'm trying to bring forth and, you know, I have resistance, it, you know, the woo kicks in and I bring it in a way that they can either uh, understand it or they could see it in my, maybe in my view or maybe, you know, they might have some more dialogue where they were just like, they couldn't see it at all, you know. Right, so right. that's a skill, a skill that, you know, I feel like it's really helped me a whole lot. Mm-hmm. I, I thank God for my woo. <laughs> <laughs> I, think you pull, I think you pull them into your love energy. Yeah. Then, mm-hmm. is that, does that that's make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, kind of move them into your love energy. It and, makes uh, sense. Yeah. And, so, and you know what, Joe, before we go uh-huh. on to the next one, it was so funny. You know, God is the stream. He's hilarious, right? So, <laughs> so, so um, I'm, I'm working and I'm, you know how you get like mail at work in terms of, of the function that you, that you work with. So I work in an HR type kind of environment. And so some of you might know about Glassdoor. Glassdoor is a place where you can get job, you know, different job listings and whatever. And then 
for employers that have a lot of articles. So guess what came in my email today? Oh, hmm. Employ employers need to know their employees love languages. Oh my <laughs> lord. Isn't that so awesome? <laughs> apropos? I said, isn't this amazing? I said on Thursday when we're talking about teach me how to love and how important it is for employers, managers, supervisors, get to know their employees' love language in wow. the world. Wow. I said, oof. I said this. I said, Lord, you funny. Okay. I said, <laughs> I to the tape back to, to the table tonight. So, yes, yes, so God right. is concerned about our love. He's concerned right. about how we love and how people love us, how others love us. Yes, okay, he is. Go ahead. I think those are great points. And uh, I think we all need to bring them to the table. And with that said, we'll move on to the next. Eventually, Lotus transforms into Eros, or, er or romantic love. From our first kiss to our first partner, this is the stage of falling in love with someone else. It is a thrilling ride no roller coaster can ever match. It's a domain of ports and playwrights, a love on which thousands of stories and songs are based. It is a type no one who experienced it can ever forget. That's romantic love or eros love. From your first kiss to our first partner. And you said that per you will never forget that one? Yes, you'll never. Okay, it says it's a type. It's a type. No okay. one who experienced it can can ever forget. Mm -hmm. So, and it's your first one. I guess that, I didn't understand the whole definition. Yeah, read yeah, it again, yeah. Daryl, please. I'll, okay, you want me to read it, y'all? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so eventually, Ludus forms. Okay, so Ludus, we have Ludus right here. Now it says Ludus which is that flirtatious, right? That's what yeah, we playful were. love. That's the playful, playful love. humor. Okay. So eventually, Ludus transforms. Okay. It's transforming. It's changing. Uh-oh. Into Eros or romantic love. So Ludus to Eros. Okay. So we're going down a journey right here. This is what it sounds like to me. And so from, from our first kiss, to our first partner. It is the stage of falling in love with someone else. It's a thrilling ride. No roller coaster can ever match. It's the domain of poets and playwrights, a love on which thousands of stories and songs are based. It's the type no one who experiences it can ever forget. Mm -hmm. wow. Thank you. wow. Have y'all been there? <laughs> All of us have. <laughs> <laughs> have y'all been there on the roller coaster? All of us have experienced that. That, you know, it's just like we're on a, content, a continuum. I'm not going to be the first to speak, but yes. Go on, Miss Shirley. Open it up. Well, <laughs> open up Pandora's box. <laughs> as I was thinking, so so when he put his head on my shoulder and uh we had the Lutus thing, mm -hmm. it could have grown. And I did I think we did become girlfriend boyfriend. It went into a girlfriend boyfriend situation and i think that it that becomes eros e-r-o-s mm -hmm. -O i think i think lotus becomes eros if we allow it that lotus to grow if we accept it and um i think we've all experienced a first love yes i do it may not have been with the person with the lotus 
uh, it could have been something else. But I think as we grow and we like boys, as young girls, we like boys, and then we our bodies start to change and and this and that and the other, uh, and 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 just because maybe a girl had uh, intercourse uh, be, when she was a girl, a kid. That doesn't mean that's Eros. Eros is that first romantic love that you think made a difference in your growing up. Um, and it could have continued and it may not have continued. But yeah, I had that experience and, and all of you have too. And I can remember remember mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful, Miss Shirley. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. still get from remembering. Mm -hmm. it, it, anybody else? Come on, somebody, open up that mic. We talking about the love thing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get it right. You know, we, is, we, is this when when the butterflies and everything are going? You know, <laughs> we get, you know, they said you know the heart thumping. You can hear the heart thumping. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Just all those things. You Ask know, Miss Shirley. She knows. Ask Miss Shirley about it. <laughs> Well, Faith, you do you know? Come on, Mr. Welton, he knows too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's when the, when the butterflies are in your stomach, in the pit of your stomach, and you're just excited. You, you you got a little pep in your step, and you know, and that person's on your mind all the time. And uh, uh, yes, yeah, and, and you don't think nothing of nothing but you know talking to that person. Right. Uh, you know, being with that person, um, you know, it's, 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 you know, I, I think God gave us a special place in our hearts to, for, you know, hopefully everybody gets a chance or has a, had a chance to, 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 to uh, be able to have, to be able to experience that. Yes. I mean, yeah. I used to, we used to, you guys didn't experience it though, but this is my Emma Scott days. Um, oh, and who was the Scotty on here? No, <laughs> honey, you, you know, you got a Scotty girl, you got a Scotty, I'm sorry. You guys didn't get to race out on the football field at the end of a game and walk your f favorite player off the field. Did y'all oh, know about oh, that? Y'all didn't so know sure. about that? Oh, I my don't God. Know. Now my auntie told, taught me a, told me a lot of stories. Now, oh, I don't, baby, I don't so know what we used, to, <laughs> we used to run out at the end of the game, and we walked all the football players off. And so, of course, my boyfriend was the the the, the main football. I forgot his position now, and oh, it was a whole bunch of girls around him. But I mean, I remember all of those days. We used to have so much fun doing that. I mean, it's nothing like that now. But yes, your that was my year Eros. Yeah. Well, you guys are bringing back memories now. Oh yeah. <laughs> with this discussion. <laughs> Good memories. Memories <laughs> of the miles we left behind. <laughs> All righty then. Well. Mm -hmm. well yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, it's those memories. I think she's <laughs> those memories are kind of. I, I hear it. I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at she laughing, giggling. She's giggling like she's a teenager. I'm you know, serious. <laughs> you know how growing up love is. Oh yeah, and they, they used to call we, it puppy Scott love. Is that what they used fun, to call though. puppy love? Is that what they used to call puppy love? Puppy love, but I don't. Mine grew into more than a puppy love. <laughs> That's all right. This, this is wonderful. Miss Katara, she got her hand up. Let's see what she has to say. What the good after? Is. Good evening. Good evening. I do hear Miss Shirley over there. And she brought the joy of the youth is on her right now. <laughs> I, it, it's making me giddy just thinking about, um, you know, first loves and whatnot. But as we grow older, I've learned that the Euros love is 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 not as uh, enduring as the other loves that you guys are about to talk about. So I I call the Euros love the honeymoon phase because oh, yeah. during that time, 
you know, like he said, you got the butterflies, you're all giddy, <laughs> you're excited, you can't wait to see them, you, you don't want to leave when you're with them, you know, you, you'll lose time and focus and, and forget <laughs> yeah. about your schoolwork and you'll forget about <laughs> at work, you don't want to go to work, you know, it, it's, it's just, you're just encompassed and you're just fully, you just want to take in their whole being, you're like, oh my God, this is so wonderful, like, and, and that lasts however long that lasts. Depending on who who that person is that you have allowed to enter that phase with you, and also what age and stage of life you're in, and that. So I think that's probably one of the. Um, it's not necessarily. I wouldn't say I would necessarily say superficial, but it 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 kind of like that because when you meet people new and you engage with them romantically, you kind of always start there. Right. That's but the key point is that you will always remember that you will always remember you will always I, I um I can remember like my teenage love you know I, I will never ever um forget him um but I, I think if I do ever forget him I will always remember that feeling um and I think I think it's like a euro do you remember yes. the person of your first euro Yes. And okay. so to me, I also think it's like a drug. Um, it's it's addictive. <laughs> because once you feel like that, the, the first time you ever feel like that, it's like you're forever trying to chase that same feeling okay. in every other relationship because it's so <laughs> exhilarating. It's such a high. It's like I've never felt like this before in my life. Oh my God, I think I just love him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good yeah. example. You could be example. like 14, 15, you could be 20, you could be 19, however you are. You just, you know, I could just, I remember just coming home one day, just throwing my backpack in my room and falling on my bed like I fell off. That's oh my you. God, I just love <laughs> him. You know, and, and goodness gracious, as I grew up, as, I, as I'm aging now, when I think back and look at him, he was probably one of the ugliest little things, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you couldn't tell me nothing, you know, and yeah. oh my goodness, but right, I, I do, right. I will never forget that feeling, and I think it's very, it's very addictive if we don't mature, we will always chase that feeling, and once that feeling fades in a relationship, I think that's why we have a lot of um, in and out of relationships because that feeling fades and then all of a sudden, I don't feel that way anymore. Now I have to go into what they call the covenant stage and a lot of us are hugely letting go at that yeah. point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's who, who is this talking though, please? Cause I'm not on, I'm on my phone and I don't see everybody's name. Who is that? This? Tambra. Tambra. Mm -hmm. Okay, how Cambria, I, I know your name now. Yeah. Hi. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Um, uh, one of the um church oh, churches that I visit, a pastor said he's doing a relationship series right now, and he says because we have a marriage problem, well, why we have divorces and a lot of problems in marriages because we have a dating problem. <laughs> so you know the dating problem forms and goes over into if you date wrong get married sometimes the marriage will end up you know kind of shaky and have a lot of you know stuff going on or either forms into divorce but yeah. what we're talking about tonight we're, we're talking about that love that makes butterflies fly <laughs> in your like, can I make a comment on what you just said mm -hmm. I'm, I'm catching a visualization of what your pastor is trying to say. And, you know, I was thinking that if we don't have a positive, if we did not obtain a positive, uh, oh, what's the word? If we, didn't, if we didn't go through those phases of love positively, if something happened that interrupted the natural positive transition from one, from the the love of a child, the familial uh, to uh, the other loves, I think it disrupts your pattern and there could be, there could, could develop issues and problems mm -hmm. that a person may need therapy for. 
it, 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 it's, it's kind of like what you just said about your pastor, how some of these love relationships end in divorce. And I think something happened along the line in their development that was not positive. I mean, it could be anything, incest, rape. I mean, even uh, the first intercourse, it could be anything that could have destroyed the, the normal and the natural and the positive uh, interaction with that type of love. And interaction is not the right word, but uh, interface with that type of love. You know yeah. what I'm trying to say? It could be yeah. underlying issues. Yeah. That, yeah. That could have um, spent, spun off to have those type of relationship um, situations in, in the marriage that weren't dealt with. Right. Like you said, um, Ms. Shirley, that they didn't have counseling or whatever was needed to take care of it. And, you know, you sweep stuff under the rug so long, you start falling, you know, over the bumps in the rug. That's right. And not even, and not only in marriage, but in oh, any yeah. relationship that you oh, have. Yeah. If you didn't have a positive transition, it could throw you off in learning how to love yourself, as we've discussed like the last week or so, or learning to love the other person. Because right. we didn't yeah. we didn't understand it and we didn't learn what it was all about. True. One thing that our Marilyn says all the time, don't wake up love before it's time. That's right. But don't Joe, I'm not married and I had positive through all of those, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a journey the journey yeah. that went from Ludus to eros yeah yes. and if you do the journey right then uh -huh. all that other all the other roller coaster uh -huh. and, you know, all, feeling like you know you're hearing poets um reciting to you and you're in a yeah. play of love you know romeo and juliet and songs yeah. and you hear all that <laughs> stuff going on you know <laughs> feel like you're gonna faint you know they need to get smelling salts and stuff to wake you up you know, like a timbre was saying yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. That, and, that's true all that's true and I then I go ahead joe i know you're trying to get to the next one go ahead <laughs> Yeah, I was trying. Uh, yeah, I was trying to get to the next one. We got a, this one, then we got one more, and then we'll be through the seven. Um, what am I saying? The seven different forms of love. Hopefully, each of us That's eventually. Right. We yeah, we got this one and one oh, more, okay. two more after that. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully, each of us eventually finds a special someone with whom we can progress to pragma are enduring love. Mm. This, this is love everlasting, love eternal, a love that occurs when two equals decide to experience this crazy journey together. A love based on dedication, commitment, on sharing each other's challenges, revealing each other's victories, and a love that deepens within the years. That sounds like marriage, Pragmas. Yeah. Yes, that was that that was the love I was talking about, Joe. As the the covenant is what um when I was taught these things, they called it the covenant stage of love. Okay. So it's it's the it's the promise that you know you going you're going to go through these once the butterflies go, right. you know you're going to endure the love. And so it's an enduring love. And so, yeah, yeah like, like uh, Miss Faith said, if you do the journey right, then it, and it turns out right. Um, right. And, and I absolutely agree with Miss Shirley. If, it, if, it, if the love cycle in your youth or anywhere was interrupted or disrupted or somewhat perverted, you, you have challenges going through those phases correctly. But that's not always the case either because like she said, she's enjoyed those and she's not married, but we all have, I think we all go through these different journeys and learning them with different right. people, because I do also believe that that's not just romantic, that love that you just spoke of. It's very much friendship mm -hmm. or sistership or brothership. Yeah. Um, I'm my, I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. And that's right. when you get to the point where you start covering your friends 
in love, even though they may be different from you or difficult to deal with by other people's means or whatever, you don't care because you love this person through their trials and tribulations mm -hmm. and their challenges. And this type of love is what makes the love of another being grow when it's exposed to them, whether they've been exposed to it or not. When you're a friend to a friend, that love makes that friend a friend. That's if that right. makes any sense. No, that <laughs> and, makes a lot of sense. Because and many so, people, go yeah, ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Oh, no. I was just going to say, so it's just like the Bible said, iron sharpens iron. And yes. so if you've never experienced that type of love before and a friend shows you that love or a mentor shows you that love or somebody comes in and exhibits that love to you, you want to turn around and be an exhibition of that love as well. And, the, yes. and those are friends that leave footprints in your heart. Mm -hmm. That's, That's the kind of that's the friend. Many come and go, but friends leave footprints in your heart. That's enduring. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying, Katambra, it's an enduring love. It's an enduring love that say, hey, we're going through a situation. Right. Can I find you? Can I find you who in, in a tough situation? You don't have to find me. I'm there. I'm so Ooh. close. I'm there. You don't have to look for me. Mm -mm. I'm not missing an action. Come on. I'm here. here. Mm -hmm. What do we what do we need to do? We it's we, we, we. Not I. it's we. We Ooh. we we uh, it's not I, 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 I gotta go over here. No, it's not that. It's a we. Mm -hmm. We win. We win. We win together. That's but, right. Yeah, that's it's the teamwork, that's, right? Yeah. It's the team oh, absolutely. Spiritual makes the partnership. Game. Yeah. Spiritual partnership. And guess what? And, and God partners, and we partner with God. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and if you don't put God first, you won't experience yeah. a healthy Pluto. Yeah. What did you say? Pluto? Pluto? You won't experience that health in a healthy way. Mm -mm. That's mm -hmm. pragma. We're talking about pragma. Yeah, you will yeah. not experience flag pragma yeah. if you don't okay. put God first, in my yeah. view. Right. Yeah. Right, right. It won't Any, be authentic. Anybody else on enduring love before we move on to the next one? Okay, so Peggy, I'm calling roll call here. Okay, Anita, Cheryl, Daryl, Evelyn, Peggy, Robin, Sheena, Tamara. Does anyone of you all have any comments on this? on this part or anything that we've talked about and you haven't shared. Because you all are part of the conversation. That's right. <laughs> hey, Robin. Hey. I'm just, <laughs> I am just enjoying the conversation. Excuse me. I really am enjoying it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yes. We're glad well, to hear yeah. Any. Anybody else before we move on to the next, uh, which would be self love? Uh oh. Self -love. So, with, I guess, with nobody have coming, we'll move into the next one. As we grow older and become beset by cares and challenges, disappointments, and regret, we then discover the importance of. Ooh, for you, for leisure. Well, anyway, it's that I can't say that properly, -A -A but I L A. Yeah, help me out. Help me out. Hey. Spell it again, please. P H I L A U T I A. T -I -A. But but T. Any with this bypass. Is, I, I, yeah, that's good. That's yeah. good. Our self love. <laughs> these days, many people. <laughs> these days, many people refer to it as self care. This is about learning to accept and appreciate yourself for who you are and what you bring to the universe. Love that. It's about. That's where I am right now. <laughs> yes. And I think it's okay to be that sure. Yeah. I am because I'm 74, 73 or 74. 
And so uh, you said later in life. And oh, yeah. so the, the one thing is that I don't really know what I bring to the universe, but I know I understand the first part of what you read uh, mm -hmm. to say evaluate your self-worth and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and you know what you want, you know what you don't want, and you know you, you, don't, you no longer have fears. I mean, because partly both because I'm a nurse, I'm an RN and I'm old, I can speak freely about these things that others may be shy about, like intercourse or sex or the first partner, you know, because when I was younger, I wouldn't say anything like that. I wouldn't speak on those terms. You wouldn't catch me mentioning anything like that. But as you get older, you can use me. You're yeah. free to talk about it, you know? So yeah. that's why I say I'm there because I'm really comfortable talking about it because we all grown anyway. So yeah, go ahead. But some people reach maturity at different age. You know, like I said, Joe is beyond his year, years because of the wisdom that he has. And like I was a slow grower in maturity. So perhaps some of the stuff I should have reached when I was younger than now, but I didn't reach it. <laughs> and you know, it's okay, really. It took oh, me a yeah, while to right accept you're... that. Yeah. It, it took me a while to accept that, but I have accepted it. Amen. Um, bring, okay, it's about celebrating your own differences and quirks, acknowledging your own needs and emotions, and taking steps to ensure your own happiness. And this is real talk right here. Taking steps about to celebrating. ensure your own happiness. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's about celebrating your own differences yes. um, and quirks and acknowledging your needs and your emotions. It's really about finding your identity in I mean, who you are and being okay with that. That's right. And, and, and you know, owning it, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. She said, hey. It is what it is, right? And here, I mean, I'm here now. I didn't get it then when, I guess you say, when you're supposed to get it, but I got it now and I'm good with that. I, you That's know, right. I feel free. Right. Um, when you accept yourself, then you feel free about who you are. You don't have to live up to anybody else's dreams, okay. expectations, need. You do you. Okay. In that term. But we still have God in the center. <laughs> exactly. I say you just do he's you first. Know, you know, but he's first. But then, you know, God created us. And so he right. likes to be diverse. I mean, he yeah. wants us diverse. You know, we don't want to be a clone. We don't want no, to look no. like everybody. Mm -hmm. We want exactly. our own unique gifts and be firm in who we are and have that love and, and everything else that God created us. To That's be. right. Yeah. That's well said. Wild yeah, you're not a carbon copy of anybody. Mm -mm. You're supposed to be. You have your Let own me hear brain. you, Wal Walton. Hmm. Let me Welton. hear you, Walton. Walton. I think he posted something in the box. He um, I think he is he. Welton. Oh, he just put. Oh, he put the pronunciation. Bila Tia. Philatia. Mm -hmm. That's that's the pronoun. Thank you, Welton, for the phonetics. Okay, yeah. phonetics, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I heard my name. Uh, what did my sister say? She wanted to hear from me. I, I want to hear you. I want to hear you on this top, on this one, on this love uh, title. Okay. You're well, the only other male in the room, so we need to hear from you and Joe often. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Self love. Uh, I I think that um, it's uh, like it's like uh, Joy said. It is something that you that you don't learn very from the beginning. You know, it, it, it it's something you have to learn later on. That and especially usually it's usually when uh some you know may, maybe some not so good things happen in your life or some things that. You've been under some a lot of strain and you know some some trials and things like that. You realize that, and that's why I think it mentioned that 
you know, it's usually happening later in life when you learn that, you know, to, to, to be able to make it, you know, you know, the length, you know, length of time that you want to, the eighties, nineties, whatever it may be, you, you have to learn how to love yourself and know, uh, get to a point where, you know, how to say no, how to have time for yourself and not depend on other people, just other people, because people aren't going to look out for you the way that you would or God would. And so sometimes you have to get to a place where you have to show love to yourself. And, you know, just like us as, I think us as uh, humans that are not perfect, you know, sometimes it's hard for us to find that, you know, that balance, you know, some people are like all self-love. Oh, it's all about me. It's all about me. And then they, you have the other people that the other extreme where, you know, it's all about them. And you have to find that happy medium uh, place that <laughs> that you are able to love other people, but not at the expense of not uh, loving yourself and looking out for yourself. Uh, cause if, you know, if you're not able to take care of your stuff, yeah, the, the thing that really turned me around was when I realized that, you know, my kid, my, my, uh, my three kids have, uh, don't have, they haven't had, they have not even married yet. And so, so they don't have any kids. And so, yeah, I want to be around, I want to be around to see my grandkids and stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I've been, I have to, I have to take care of myself and I have to, right. you know, you know, you know, don't let everything around you drive you nuts or to the places, you know, the place where you you get ill, you know, because I, I, yeah. I did allow myself to get to a place where I ended up with uh, a few strokes and, and uh, light strokes, but still, you know, and, and that turned the light on for me that I have to look out for myself as well. Mm-hmm. That's good. Well, That's a great story. Yes. You know, yeah. Um, when you were talking, um, when Shirley was talking and everybody, I just thought about, you know, sometimes we identify self love with taking care of our bodies, you know, especially women. I'm talking about women. I don't know about, you know, the men, mm-hmm. women, but massages and get our nails done. We get facials, we get our feet done. And you know, that's cool too, you know, to um kind of like relate to self-love in that way. But eyelashes. <laughs> eyelashes. <laughs> eyelashes, <laughs> yes. Okay. And so um <laughs> <stop it. laughs> you <laughs> had it now. <laughs> and so then um I started thinking about our our mental. Hmm. you know mm-hmm. self-love in our in our mind mm-hmm. you know, the outward is cool but do we put as much emphasis sometimes on the outward as we do in the inward and making sure that we're self-loving our our thoughts our emotions our mind that we're in the right mindset that's and right we have the right posture right you know? Because if the inside is not right, the outside is, I mean, everything, it won't be, it won't emulate the true, the true beauty that God wants. That's right. I agree a hundred percent with that because mm-hmm. I say sometimes, and I think somebody said something that it's a balance. We have to balance our lives with these various things that we need to do for ourselves for self-love and it's not selfish to love yourself um no. and um you know when you're like for me I don't have children like some of you or grandchildren or whatever so it's gonna always be about me because it's just me and and unless you get to know me you won't know that uh but uh it but I'm not selfish Joe can tell you that <laughs> <No>. <laughs> No selfish. Go ahead. I'm not selfish. No, I'm not. But I'm just saying. You know, you're not selfish. No. Thank you. And so, yeah, like um, like balance. 
like I try to balance, I like to read and I have to balance my mental health is my reading and being aware of what's going on around me. And so it's very difficult to read all of the Bible that I love reading because I can read the Bible of my three different Bible courses and that will consume all of my reading. But I decided that there's other books like the 1819 mm -hmm. Project. I decided, okay, I'm gonna read just a chapter a day because I wanna read something else besides the Bible. And that gives me that mental stimulation that I need, as you say, besides the physical, the outward. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I don't get massages like I did when I lived in Los Angeles because it's not that easy and they're quite expensive here. But yeah, sometimes I get my nails done, but mostly not, but I'm okay with that because uh, manicures, they hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and you get these infections with their tools. And, but yeah, I got what you're saying. There, it's a balance. And then we go to different uh, events uh, that help you. Uh, I wish we had a comedy club here in Tyler or a place where you can go and do like open mic. Uh, that's something that many of us on this line would enjoy because we have talents like I, I know Joe has talents and and so there's other venues that would help us socially if we had those available you can do that Miss Shirley you can go down to Bobby Mobley and tell him hey let's rent this place and have an open mic mm -hmm. Put some well you know what that is that is so true but you know people don't like to leave <clears> their <throat> homes and it's used to look how long it takes us to get online. I, I want to go to Bobby Mobley and just I mean, dance. I'm not an example. I'm just not get out of, that is a good, excellent example because I want to do it and um, I want to take his classes, but I don't want to get out at seven o'clock at night because it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> look, you, if you want to yeah. open mic, get, you, get your Zoom going. I want an open mic. Yeah, and, and <clears throat> we'll open mic and you can put it on. Um, will you help me? Yes, ma'am, I will. I'll help. Thank you. <laughs> you know, did, not, did not tell you about the, that desire, Joe, already? Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah See there? Did. So thank you. So yes, yeah, I want it. So if you help me, yeah, yes. let's do it. And, and yeah. me and Joe can get it started. We're going to need everybody's help in the room. So. <laughs> Uh, everybody's invited. <laughs> it is her <laughs> well, you ask me something. Why can't we, why can't we just, instead of having a different thing, why can't we just use one session of this group <clears throat> for open mic? You and Joe think about it. Let's go <laughs> on. I mean, we could probably do that. I mean, you know what would be nice? Okay, but, so I'm, okay, so this is going to be maybe, you know, can be our open mic. I'm not saying this is going to be, we have to talk about it and see if that. I know, you and Joe discussed this. But, but look, this is what I'm thinking. Okay, once we finish, treat me, teach me how to love. Everybody write a love poem. Oh! And, and, and we can use, we can use the platform to share each other's poems. That they Excellent write. idea. It could be creative. Do it. Anything you want to say about, you know, your love. I love that. Or whatever. It doesn't have to be a poem, like free verse. It can be two lines. It could be one line. It could be two words, whatever. It's open. That sounds it's excellent. It's no, it's no rules or, or anything. Just express. Why am I the only one talking? All these young people on this line, I want to hear your voice. Please. Shirley, uh, Shirley, I'm sorry, yes. girl. Yes, you got please. me over here laughing, laughing. <laughs> girl, I was over here working. I said, "Oh, Shirley is tripping me out with this open mind and all this other stuff." Shirley, you so excited over there, girl. You got me over here laughing. But um, uh, I, I just love your uh, your, your spirit and everything. But um, you. you know, I agree with the. The, the, the self care. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, uh, I guess you had me even more laughing and hyped up because, you know, I was looking at um, a comedy show that I'm debating on going on um, Friday. Um, yeah, Friday because you know I I did move from Tyler, you know, um, to 
to Louisville. And I do like the fact that, you know, um, I do have um, more options to choose from, oh, you know, right. you know, cause I love that karaoke and that, and yes. that, and that little, that little sound, you know, you got to be up here in the big Dallas area. And, and Shirley, guess what? I love that, um, what's his name? Chris Stapen, Tennessee Whiskey. I don't know yes. them. You got to tell me, tell me about uh, it. Chris, uh, Chris Stapen, Stapen. Yes, ma'am. I don't know. Are they on TikTok? <laughs> no, oh, it's not. No, it's not on TikTok. You have to. Uh, he's okay. a white country man, and um, he seen okay. that uh, uh, that song. But um, I was pulling it up today because one of our um uh, recruiters. Oh, he's Tennessee. He's he's a uh, uh, country. Yeah. Um, seen that song. He's a black guy. Yes, I know him. Uh huh. And um, yes, we I know him. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and Cheryl, I have to think of a karaoke song today to send to get um get one, get some of these hot jobs. And then here you go talking about this karaoke <laughs> stuff. But, but um, you can even sing. You can you can even sing your your uh. You don't have to speak it. It could be a a song if you want to sing it. If you got that talent, use your gifts. Whatever right. gifts you got, we want to see them, and we're gonna display our our giftings. What about Sounds that? great. Sounds Tina, great. Can you can you do that? Will you be willing to do that that night? Well, I won't be able to sing. <laughs> uh, I, I don't Whatever. think I, I don't think I can sing. I just sing I just be singing in church with the choir and I <laughs> in the audience, and I just sing like that and just hope they don't turn the music down because I don't know what my <laughs> voice sounds. <laughs> <actually. laughs> it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> and whatever you want to do is fine. Whatever but, you want to do is fine. But you know, back in the day, I used to love. Uh, it's been so you know long. I know we had you know talked about those little memories and stuff. I used to love um, poetry. I don't know if that went out the door or what, but I used to, I used to um, love poetry. Um, I used to love that for a very long time. I, I don't know if it's still um, there or not. But Tara said, "I understand. I blend in too, girl. Me too." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, Shirley, I don't know. You might be coming on to something, I guess. But you just have to, uh, just got to hope that um, people would uh, want to do it. And, you know, they got to be up for it and stuff like that. That's true. But, yeah. That's true. Um, well, I know Joe is trying to get through those other love lang love languages, the definitions. <laughs> and let them discuss it first, the two of them, because this is their spot, their room. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it would be great. Yeah. it's something to consider for okay. sure moving yeah. on yeah mm -hmm. yes it's awesome yes thank Where you oh thank you all mm -hmm. okay so early. we get we get to as they would say we get to the end of the this would not be number seven and it's ironic that it's number seven because seven is the number of man when we think about it well it's just a thought, but anyway, let's go into number seven. It's the number of what, Joe? This is number seven. The number of what did you say? Seven. Uh, seven is the number of man. Oh, man, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's just ironic that this is the seventh uh, one of these. That's what I mean. I was putting it in numerical principle, that's all. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, we have agape. Mm. Or uh, selfless love. This is a kind that most of us expire to. A love that recognizes neither race, nor color, nor creed. A love that leads to doing good for others. It's a love based on empathy, charity, and most of all, kindness. For me. Yes. A love that transforms us into something greater than the flesh and bones we were born with. Now that's a mouthful of that. It is a mouthful. I think we all in awe. Seven is also the number for perfection or completeness. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and it's, it's like, that is definitely the kind of love that uh, the love of God 
talks about when he says, love me with all of your heart and all of your mind, all of your soul. And when he says, love your neighbor as yourself. And um, that's the kind of love that we should aspire for. Right. Uh, I actually like people. I love people. Uh, and uh, I was open up to different cultures when I lived in um, uh, Los Angeles, Welton. And um, so I'm back home, culture shock for, for nine years when I moved back. Uh, and but I started to I didn't like certain people before I left here. And when I came back, I can look them straight in the face now and I like them. I can look at them and I can feel like I'm in the same room. I'm in the room with anybody. It doesn't matter what the color of the face is or what their culture or what their experiences are or have been because I know what who I am. I know who they are. I know what they as a people have done. They know I know. And it's cool. And we can relate in areas that we enjoy together. And uh, I'm glad I'm like that. And I'm mm -hmm. glad that the Lord has put that in my soul to love because it makes it easy to love thy neighbor as ourself. Even as I learn uh, more about our background, our culture, our, our chattel slavery and all of that, you know, I can still love. And uh, and, and, and I know that only love can really heal all of that. And I know that everybody's not going to make it in. And God is going to have his day where he's going to look at that. And I can't do anything about it anyway. So uh, we just have to love people for people and not because of what they look like on the outside. That's right. So Tamara, <clears throat> Go ahead. Tamara has her hand up. Sure. I just wanted to piggyback off what Ms. Shirley is saying. Um, it, it's, I don't think it coincidence that the self-love comes before the agape love. Because wow. how can you love someone else unless you love yourself? Right. And so I think that is something that, as I said, it's very fluid as we mature yes. through life. And so understanding our darkness and our light and then understanding our weaknesses and our strengths that should allow compassion for ourselves that we may have compassion for others that we may love them with an agape love and not yes. just as people but looking at them not as humans but as beings because yes. god created them just like yes. he created us and yes. so if you can if and i think it takes a while um, yes. to get to agape love yes. because of all of the, the different ups and downs and ebbs and flows of getting yes. to self-love. Yes. And so just like she said, the scripture says the two greatest things is to love God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. And the second of these is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So yes. you have to perfect self-love before yes. you can perfect agape love. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because <laughs> if you just think about it, it's simple. It's simple. You got to love yourself in order to love others. And that in those terms, it's a selfless love. Yes. You yes. Love first selfless. So you can love someone. I like that. Or it won't be balance it won't be you know i'm not saying it wouldn't be authentic because some people they feel that they are showing authentic love if they don't know nothing else but what they have but that pure love if you really love yourself and you are secure in who you are and and you're gonna do the best for you you're gonna do the best for somebody else you're gonna give your best you want you don't want to give them hand me downs that got holes, and you want to get the best for you, and you should want to give the best for somebody else as well. Yes, I like that word selfless, and I like that word that Katamara used fluid because fluid. the process should be it's fluid, it's going to be fluid whether you have a, ne a negative experiences within that as you're growing through all these love processes it's going to be fluid but you want it to stay on a positive fluidity if you can 
positive fluidity. I like that. <laughs> yeah. All right, wow. you're doing this open mic thing. I'm telling you, I'm going to help you, but this is your baby, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know if I'm 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 good enough to yeah, make him yeah. my baby. I'm gonna, yes, I'm you gonna are. Get, I'm gonna get your <laughs> phone number and I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna, <laughs> okay, it's okay, I'm gonna get it. So, so you have well, Miss Shirley's number, right? Oh yeah. Okay, I, I I'll give you a buzz on Miss Shirley. <laughs> I was gonna say that um, agape love, which is the the God type of love that He has for us, unconditional love, and we're supposed to have for other people. You can't um, have those other loves without agape or, yeah. or be able to, uh, well, you can have a form of it. But the thing uh -huh. is, is that in a true relationship, um, you, the agape, because you're not going to always feel eros. You're not going to always feel friendly. Yeah. You're not going to always. And so if that, if that was the yeah. case, then, you know, that's why people... I guess can fall out of love or can, or, or their, their, their uh, feelings can diminish because uh, they don't have those butterflies anymore. And the thing is, is though, it, the thing is that, is that the agape love is what, when you don't feel like it, or you, you get angry about something, or you're irritated about something, you still love that person yeah. and because God loves us in, con, unconditionally. And oh so it's God. that, that so it's that agape love that keeps everything together. That's that that that's what bridges the gaps because you know we are human and we have emotions and all our emotions aren't the best. And uh, so I believe that you know if if, if two people in a, in a relationship have that agape, true agape love, it's going to be times when one person is not going to feel it. And then there's going to be other times the other person, but between the two, and that's why, you know, being, but being equally yoked is so important because, oh my God. Uh, because the thing is, is that if, if, if you're not equally yoked, that means that one person will have that agape love and the other one won't. Oh, and wow. so you're in it by yourself. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, and to know that first of all, True love and divine love that comes from God must expand. You can't Ooh. box love. You can never box something that's so much bigger than all of us. Right. You can't put that in a box. And like I said, love has to expand. But what love is expanding in you? Humans love varies and changes. Spiritual love never changes, but varies. Divine love never changes and never varies. That's what we're trying to be. And I think that's, that's agape in every sense of the term. Mm -hmm. And wow, that's- we got through them, didn't we, Joe? Huh? We got through them. I think we did, but I think we did. I think they brought so much to all of us. Because yeah. as I walk through it, uh, as we walk through it together, and enlighten me on quite a bit of things, I think it's some things we 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 may have known and then put a name to it, mm -hmm. but now we can put a name to our seven. But right. again, I think the consensus of everyone, and Contambo said it best, is the gap with the selfless love. Welton said, I think we all can come to the conclusion of. Uh, to expire to that. Yeah. And what, what does that look like? To me, is keeping our hearts turned to God above in and everything, every day, becoming the best person you can be, driven in love that has no condition. Mm -hmm. That's the selfless love. That's where we are. Wow. Can you speak more on love needs to be expanded? I can't quite grasp that right it's, now. It's kind of like, you know, what I was saying one time before is that when we pray, don't wish God is in your heart. Push pray that you in the heart of God because mm -hmm. it's so much bigger. Where can you be that God is not there? 
It's all around. It's evident. We talked about earlier about, you said something about the universe, um, Shirley. The thing is, when you look at the universe, it's a picture of God. Love, <laughs> harmony, and cooperation. Look at the night sky. You don't see anybody, any of the stars, the moon. Uh, they are not fighting mm -mm. because it's a picture of God. And, and I hope I'm touching base on what you're saying, but mm -hmm. it's no, you know, love, God's love is every, and anything that's living has God's love in it. Mm -hmm. it's it. the, <clears throat> I'm sorry. To what no, keep going, but I'm saying it's, it's uh, I'm understanding, expand it. The, the question I had, I'm understanding it, but go ahead. Well, it's growing. It's, it's mm -hmm. always growing. You want it to grow. That's why we say we invite God into our heart. Mm -hmm. and, and our heart expands. We see things solely different. You're growing. And mm -hmm. you can see God in so much as you allow God to circumcise you in your own heart mm -hmm. and then you wake up all of a sudden you see love everywhere mm -hmm. you can't see nothing else because your love your heart is full of the grounding mm -hmm. of love of anything living and that's god and that's the that transformation that we are study pursuing mm -hmm. forming this being into the entity we need to be in the earth school to do the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. mm. We, Thank you. Word prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, prayer. like when we pray, mm -hmm. we're not. Well, I could just say, when I pray, I pray for others, right? Yeah. And then if our prayers are not, we want our prayers to be heard by God and to honor those prayers right mm -hmm. so when we pray we're praying with confidence and we're allowing our prayers to expand mm -hmm. further mm -hmm. to another another you know area than just me we become and yeah my prayer closet mm -hmm. is going out out it's a, yes out it's yes. touching it's moving if it's mm -hmm. here it's just stagnant and sometimes we do have to pray in, 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 in that posture, you know, when, when we're praying for, for needs or whatever, but we should have unselfish prayers right. that will leave us and touch others. Mm -hmm. it, it could be others, meaning it could be someone in our family. You know, we have targeted prayers. We have prayers and intercession you know we're not going talking about the different types of mm -hmm. prayer that we have but those types of prayer prayers when you intercede for others and that's uh, that's the uh, selfless love because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you're taking you're, you're taking time to um uh, be authentic intentionally you're praying for a purpose you're praying for something to happen you're praying for god to move Yes, you know, in that area. So you're expanding. And I think it expands us. Oh, by far. You know, if you if you ever yes. think about like one, like one week, okay, I'm gonna pray for this person. I'm gonna like you have a prayer target, so you have a prayer list, and every time you pray and you start to see the results of your prayer, you expanding yourself. You're like, <laughs> okay, I'm confident, I'm praying confident, yeah. you know. I'm, yeah. I'm building myself up. I'm loving God and he's loving me because my prayers avail of much. Yeah, yes. that's right. Yeah. I love love. Oh, thank you. Thank you guys so much for that. Love, love too. And Miss Shirley, guess what? What? You said tonight. You said, I don't know. I'm doing your voice. I don't know what I'm bringing to the universe. <laughs> yes, <laughs> well, I don't just, know that. Guess you. what? Her now name you know. is Shirley Witherspoon. You are, you, oh. he brought you to the universe for <laughs> others, okay? <laughs> you are, you got a package ready yeah. all the time. So you yes, are, thank you so much for your encouragement. You <laughs> I think we've, faith, we are there, I think. 
I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're there. We have arrived, right? We have arrived <laughs> at the end of this yeah, journey. Yeah, I think we got to the, 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 the number seven and past that. But, I, you know, again, uh, it's a, she's a wealth of wisdom. That is so Amen. true. Amen. Yeah. And, uh, and I say to you, keep being the person that you are. Yes. Thank you. Yes, you 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 are a voice. Mm -hmm. You are a voice to be um, dealt with. Because mm -hmm. I say that, and then we'll move on to the closes. That this, uh, I think, any of us on the line, anytime we speak against the lies of the world, we are mystics. We mm -hmm. come to enlighten, and that's what a mystic do. Mm -hmm. we, you know, they come to get to speak against the lies of the world and spread mm -hmm. the good news. And it's a form of spreading the good news when we come together and become mm -hmm. better than we were when we came into the room as, as uh, my sister Faith always saying, into the living room. And her other two words, or other three is caring and sharing. Yes. So that in itself should be put on the billboard of our hearts maybe so with that faith back to you let me just say something right now please before we go to you faith i want to thank you and joe and all the others on the line to uh, allow me to come on and be myself um, you don't know what that means to me because so so many times when we reach a certain age uh in our lives uh seniors are rejected as though they don't have value and Joe always encourages me when I say things on the negative because I don't see myself as you guys have described me. And it's not for me to see, I've decided. It's for you to see, I guess. And I'm glad that I don't see what you see. Um, God, that's the way of God protecting me. But thank you for letting me have a voice on this line. Thank you for uh, uh, inviting me, Joe. And oh, yeah. thank you for accepting what I say. <laughs> and so if there's any life experiences that I can share helps you that's then my life is worthwhile and my time is worthwhile on this line thank you oh you're welcome well, yeah. i'm telling you we appreciate you too and we're thankful that joe invited you to come in the room in the living room so you know no more apologies and and, and we accept <laughs> you and you just right. part of the family so you, you hey you in here now so okay thank you <laughs> lockdown, lockdown click click is there thank you and so <laughs> if, if you don't if you don't show up we're gonna come looking for you, you know, <laughs> thank you those kind of people right <laughs> thank you yeah. we appreciate this faith so I always feel welcome and if you have any friends that um you know would like to come on invite them on Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is for everybody. And so thank you for everybody who put um, something in the chat tonight. We appreciate it. Um, uh, Katamra, Tamara, uh, Robin, Mr. Welton put all those definitions in. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it because it takes all of us, all of us. We want to <laughs> sit, sit join together in unity. So we all did a part, so I really appreciate it. So, Mr. Joe, uh, yes, we'll see everybody next week at 7, <laughs> 7 o'clock tomorrow, uh, next week, not tomorrow, next week, and on the 2nd of March, we'll be in a new month with new new opportunities, Yes, fresh new wind, and we <laughs> still, we'll still be talking about love. I think maybe we might go next week to the to the five love languages because um we found out this weekend that it's been two more love languages added to the five mm -hmm. uh huh so we let's talk about that next week so you all start go looking at those love languages if you haven't done the survey that you can go out on the web and it's a, a quiz that you can take and it'll tell you what your love languages are Go take that quiz so we can talk next week. We can have a discussion and everybody knows their love languages, okay? So type in the, in the browser, the five love language quiz test or whatever, and something should pop up. It's free. 
You don't have to pay for it. And it's good for you to know your love language. So, mm. you know, if some if some gentleman comes your way, he might say, well, what is your love language? And you'll say, love language, what's that? <laughs> so then, we don't want that conversation. We want you to say, oh, it's affirmation. Oh, it's quality time. Oh, it's the acts of service. You know, you we want to be versed in that so he can give you what you need. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> be ready next week, and you all have a blessed week. We love you guys. And Mr. Joe, you want to close us in prayer tonight? God, we happy to. Okay. Father, we all out by his, with our minds cleared, all hearts, heartfelt moments. Father, this place is a place where we meet you in, in the air, meet you in a place where we know you abide. We ask you, Father, to cover each and every one as we leave this space. Yes, God. Cover us, Lord. Cover each other. Let us learn more of you, carry more of you, be more like you. We come in these spaces, we don't know all the answers. I don't think we'll ever know all the answers. But as we grow in you, things start to happen. We yeah. become more loving beings. We become of a place, well, not really a place, a people that understand none of us is smarter than all of us. No human being can be more human than another human being. And we enter the doorway to humanity. And that leads to you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you all have a good week. Stay safe, yeah. healthy, and we'll see you next Thursday. Good it's night, 7.30. 7.30. No, 7 o'clock. Seven, seven o'clock. o'clock. Next okay. Thursday, seven o'clock. Thank you all for being so um cooperative about tonight. But we're going to seven o'clock next week. And Miss Shirley, I will call you as soon as Mr. Joe send me your phone number. Yes, ma'am. I'll okay. talk to you later. Okay. All right. Have a good one. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I love you guys. All right. Bye, sister. Okay. <laughs>